With the overvaluing of quarterbacks at the NFL Draft, the best overall prospect tends to go later than they should, like Chase Young or Nick Bosa. Well, this year, that player is Kyle Pitts. The Florida tight end recorded impressive measurables and followed it up with a good pro day, only solidifying what his film shows. This dude is an absolute freak. Pitts has been productive since landing in Gainesville. In 2020, he put together a monster 770-yard 12-touchdown season, enough to earn the John Mackey Award as the best tight end in college football. What makes Pitts so good is his stature that makes him damn near impossible to cover. At 6'6", six six, 245 pounds, Pitts has a clear mismatch against cornerbacks. He can bully them in coverage and towers over them. On the flip side, he can blaze past linebackers and safeties in coverage with his 444-40 yard dash. Justin Fields recently ran a 444-40 and the internet went crazy shocked about the quarterback's speed. At his insane frame, Pitts is a unicorn with that speed. There is no reason his 40 should mirror a 444 like previous prospects such as Calvin Ridley. Pitts had a faster 40 time than Travis Etienne, the running back out of Clemson. Pitts is a freak, but there is a big caveat, his blocking. There's a mixed media perception on Pitts' blocking ability, but here's the deal. Pitts is in no way a bad blocker, like I've heard a lot of people make him out to be. He's fine, but I get why the media is harsh about it, and that's because this dude is a top 5 pick at the draft and is expected to be the next great tight end. When a guy is hyped up like Pitts has been, you need him to be good at every aspect at the position, not one. Take a look at George Kittle, for example, who can both pass catch and block at an elite level. Rob Gronkowski at his peak was an elite receiver and blocker, but that doesn't mean Pitts can't be a great tight end, but it does mean that whoever drafts him needs to know how to use him. If whoever drafts Pitts is using him often in the dirt, they're doing themselves and Pitts a disservice. Pitts can be thrown out wide or put in the slot and be an elite option, but making him block often is a waste of talent. Good coaches know how to use good players the best way, and Pitts is going to need to go somewhere that knows how to use his talent. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content, please help us on our way to 100k by subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification so you never miss an upload. There hasn't been a tight end drafted in the top five since 1972. And in my lifetime, I'm 21, Kellen Winslow II and Vernon Davis are the two highest drafted tight ends at number six. So where does Pitts fall into the 2021 NFL draft? He isn't going top three, that's simple. The Jacksonville Jaguars are taking Trevor Lawrence. The New York Jets are sold enough on Zach Wilson to trade Sam Darnold, and there's no way that the San Francisco 49ers traded up to number three to take a non-quarterback. That brings up the Atlanta Falcons at number four. I think this is one of the most possible outcomes, but I stand strong that the Falcons should trade back. Offense hasn't been the issue. Matt Ryan hasn't been the issue, despite people thinking that they should take a quarterback. The defense is the problem. I think Atlanta should trade back, but if it stays at number four, I think Pitts is the easy choice. If the Falcons trade away number four to a team that is quarterback needy, that leaves the Cincinnati Bengals. Personally, I think this decision would come down to Pitts or Penny Sewell. There's been a lot of linking to the Bengals and Jamar Chase because of Joe Burrow's history with him at LSU, but Pitts is the better receiving option with higher upside in my opinion, and more than anything, Cincinnati needs offensive line help. If Pitts drops, any of the teams past five would be thrilled to get him. The Miami Dolphins have a decision to make on Mike Gisecki soon, and I don't think 
think either of the two tight ends really hold each other back. Miami could very well draft Pitts and then still sign Jacecki. The Detroit Lions own the number seven pick. I think they're another candidate that could trade back, but if they stay put, I don't think they'd take Pitts after drafting TJ Hawkinson eighth overall two years ago. After losing Kenny Galladay in free agency, I think Detroit is going to feel pretty desperate to take a wide receiver. The latest Pitts could possibly go in my mind is at number eight to the Carolina Panthers. Carolina is trying to build around Sam Darnold and it already has Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore at wide out with Christian McCaffrey at running back. Pitts would be a perfect add. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Kyle Pitts in this year's class. I think he's absolutely one of the, if not the best players in the entire draft. And again, like I've mentioned, the quarterback situation, we see it every single year, really does hurt these players that have the talent to go first overall. Everything I see on Pitts from film shows me a guy that's ready to come into the NFL. And even though tight ends tend to not produce early in the league, I think Pitts actually does have a shot to. His talent is off the charts. His measurables are off the charts. This dude is just simply put an athletic freak. From what I've seen from him, I almost think of him as the NBA's Zion Williamson. Just looking at Zion, he's a dude that I don't think he should be able to be that athletic or be able to move that the way he does at the size that he is, but he still does. And the same thing goes here with Kyle Pitts. That being said, I definitely have my worries about Pitts, like I've mentioned. His blocking, if you want him to be an in and out day blocker, I just don't think it's going to work out perfectly. He's not going to be able to be an elite blocker like we've seen George Kittle be or Rob Gronkowski. That being said, I think he is the best pass catcher in the class, meaning that if you were to switch over him to wide receiver, I do believe that he would be a better wide receiver at this point than Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, and Devonta Smith. And a lot of that comes because for starters, he's very versatile. You can put him wherever you want. If you want him on the inside, outside, get him to run the slot, he can do whatever you need him to. And he can beat whatever defender you put on him. A linebacker isn't fast enough for him. A cornerback isn't big enough for him and he'll bully him in coverage. Now, the best outcome for Kyle Pitts is very different from the most likely outcome. Right now, if I had to take a guess, I would say that the most likely outcome is him going to the Atlanta Falcons at number four. I think it makes perfect sense. The Atlanta Falcons still have Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, who, which would make them not really feel pressured to take a wide receiver like Jamar Chase. Instead, they're looking for offensive weapons. I know they need defensive pieces, but you don't take a defensive piece at number four if a top defensive player isn't going to go till 10. I think Pitts makes perfect sense in terms terms of them actually drafting, but I don't know that that's the best fit. I think that the best fit, and this is a long shot, is Kyle Pitts sinking all the way to eight and going to the Carolina Panthers. I've been a big fan of Matt Rule, what he's done so far. Carolina loves their tight ends. I mean, they remember having Greg Olson after, you know, after his stint with the Bears, they brought in Greg Olson and he became a fan favorite in Carolina. I think Matt Rule really knows what he's doing. Additionally, he'd be playing along two good wide receivers and DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, and he could end up being just a great option for San Sam Darnold. At the end of the day, my final verdict on Kyle Pitts would be that the majority of the people that I've seen talk about him or just rate him in general either have him too high or too low. And that's because the people that have him really high have told me that he's a generational tight end. He's going to be one of the best tight ends of all time. And while I believe that from a pass catching standpoint, I don't necessarily love his frame to be a tight end and I don't love his blocking ability to become one of those elite tight ends. I think he's much better off honestly switching to the wide receiver position. Additionally, those that rank him low or say that Kyle Pitts is overrated, I think most of the time are just focusing mainly on the blocking ability instead of focusing on what he can do in pass catching. If I had to put a player comparison for Kyle Pitts, I believe there is a literal perfect comparison, and that's Darren Waller, the tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. Their statures are somewhat similar, and Darren Waller himself is an amazing pass catcher. He's a great receiver, and I don't personally think he's a very good blocker, and he was drafted into the NFL as a wide receiver. Simply put, I think Kyle Pitts needs to be utilized the right way, and if whichever team drafts him decides to use the John Gruden model for Darren Waller, I think he's going to have a ton of success. Kyle Pitts is one of the most impressive players I've watched on film. He is a walking receiving mismatch for every defense with his large measurables and blazing speed, but he has to go to the right team that knows how to use him. Pitts is one of, if 
if not the most talented player in the draft. But if a team brings him in to put his hand in the dirt, they're using him wrong. But if Pitts lands in the right spot, we may see him turn into one of the best tight ends this century. Thanks for sticking to the end. Again, help us reach 100k by subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification so you never miss an upload. When we reach the milestone, we will be giving away an NFL jersey. To enter, all you need to do is make sure you subscribe and have notifications on. Then follow us both on Instagram and post a screenshot of you subscribed on your story and tag both of us.